Hey there, hello, I'm Don Dyer, retired mechanic, millwright, and machinist, and welcome to my retirement machine shop. I had another channel on fixing these old machines up, and this channel is going to be on using them. And uh, this is the first machine. I, I just really like this machine here. And it is a 1941 Axelson lathe. It was the homeliest, ugliest machine on the internet in uh, 2022, 2021. Uh, uh, it's just an out of service machine that a machine tool dealer Yoder had on eBay for $3,200 and I detailed it and it looks pretty good. I just felt like uh, kind of detailing a machine out and making it nice. And one of the nice things about this machine here is, uh, for me, is its size. Its uh, actual swing is uh, 16 and 3 quarters, and uh, actual length you can get in there is uh, about 36 inches. But uh, the nice thing about this older machine here, and, and the reason I chose it, is two speeds that it has right here 849 and 1127 you see that you can look over the whole uh speed chart here it's a 24 speed headstock and back then they uh they really spaced the slow speeds together, 13, 17, 23, 31, and stuff. But you get into the upper speeds, they, they jump quite a bit, 351, 473, 628, 849, and 1127. Now, the nice thing about those two higher speeds, and a lot of machines uh, will only go uh, about 500, is that uh, I can use carbide, uh, just regular brace carbide. It's still a little too slow for a small negative brake inserts. And machine uh, 01 drill rod in a collar chuck. And uh, that's, that's just really nice to be able to do that. And this uh, Axon has this uh, very, very heavy duty tail stock. And I do small parts and larger parts. And I'll show you what I have to chuck with and stuff. But th see, this works pretty good. And you kind of have to get back here and shove this uh, tail stock and lock it. But it's got nine inches of uh, quill travel and it's gear driven and two speeds. Really, really nice. And uh, I had to, uh, well, excuse me, almost tripped over something. I had to, uh, uh, no steady rest, that happens all the time. So I um, found on HGR this um, 18 inch steady rest for a Pratt & Whitney Model C. Chopped it down and welded it back together and uh, made it fit. And for chucks on this thing, I got a six inch uh, six jaw, eight inch three jaw, eight inch four jaw. Let's see if we can get down here. Very nice. I really like this chuck. It's probably my all time favorite chuck. A solid steel. Look at the back. Look at the front. A solid steel Cushman four jaw. Then back here, under there, I got a 12 inch bison um, forged steel chuck with a four inch hole. Just in case I have to run into the heavy stuff. Very nice for casting, so. And this one too, this Union. And uh, eight inches of a Cushman. And on here right now, I have one of those Bostar collar chucks, and it's great. So I can use this old time turret here 
and it lines up good. Had to work on things a little bit to make all these line up. Well worth it. Then I, for the small stuff, I adapted an AXA with this plate here. But normally I'd use a uh, very heavy duty uh, KDK. These things are very heavy. A little over 10 pounds. And then the tooling for it over here for heavy stuff. Right here I got some uh, insert tooling and stuff like that. And uh, I use insert tooling mostly for roughing. And then I make finishing tools, uh, braze them old time, old school, and grind them on a Cincinnati tool and cutter grinder. And uh, with that, I have a jig board machine, which is almost an absolute requirement for um, uh, having the... Uh, um, Tool and cutter grinder. And also I have a horizontal brown and sharp milling machine here, number two heavy mill, plain standard. It was made in about 1942 for the war effort. And it has, uh, you can see that war, war tag on there. And uh, it's really quite an unusual machine, but a uh, lot, a uh, uh, little rough with that. Uh, uh, war, war finish, but the precision is there. This is a precision machine. Now, uh, the, the cutter grinder is a war machine, too. Okay, so we're kind of in that corner. And, of course, uh, the jig boring machine is for accurately locating and accurately boring uh, holes. And... Uh, Compared to a bridge port, it's uh, quite a bit more accurate because it's uh, designed to locate and bore holes. Nothing moves on the head. The head travels up and down on those waves, but it's not power fed. The, uh, what makes the machine more rigid is there's no knee. You see the uh, slides here are on the base and uh, nothing moves here the table moves on top of that and then this whole thing moves back and forth so it's uh takes up quite a uh, smaller space than a regular mill it's eight feet tall weighs four thousand pounds takes special tooling has special shanks. Let's see if I can find one here. Here's one I made. And that's it. It's got a square thread that uh, holds it in. You have to be very careful with these. You don't want to uh, run them in uh, to a hot spindle. And uh, it would be very hard to get out. But if your bearings are good, the spindle, the spindle stays cool. What was that? Oh, I knocked that little thing over. I moved. Okay, so I got uh, the uh, accuracy is enhanced on this, and so you can use uh, dial board gauges. Okay, and there's some uh, uh, dial indicating snap gauges for measuring uh, tenths, like the board gauges. And oh, yep, we got the brown and sharp mill. And uh, the cutter grinder is great for the horizontal um, wheel cutters and such. And we'll be getting into that. Over here, I got the collets for that, some other attachments. Uh, that's the 40 taper stuff there for uh, the sliding vertical head attachment that uh, is driven by that spline right there in the middle. And it can be replaced with a horizontal arbor. The machine uses a horizontal milling machine, leaving this right where it is. And this is kind of an early weird version of a range master sliding head mill. They, they made this uh, for a very short time during the war. 
thought it was an improved product with uh, <laughs> with the sliding head build, which is a great improvement. This this works great, but you know it's got some hitches. We'll talk about some of that cool stuff. Then we come around the corner here, and my Levin instrument or jeweler's light. And this is just really nice to have for small, small stuff, pens, things like that, working on your clocks. Then over here is one of the uh, best slaves ever made. This is a 1983 inch metric Monarch 10 E still holding factory tolerances is absolutely phenomenal and I think you'll get a kick out of that I certainly do and I'll make plenty of videos on this too now that I'm going to be putting it to work a little bit okay I'm going to take off here how are we doing on time oh I gotta go and uh you guys have a good day and take a look at my other videos i've got there's a shop going out of business and some really cool stuff for sale let's have an overview there we go my big mess table okay bye folks